Why do we love nostalgia so much? You're killing me, Smalls. Nostalgia is a sentimental affection for the past, a longing for a period or place with happy associations. So whether it's Beanie Babies or Walkmans or Pokemon cards or VCR tapes, we can't help but smile when thinking about items and occurrences from our past. Why is that? We are wired to forget the bad experiences. The intensity of past life challenges and hardships wane over time, yet we tend to remember the good stuff. That's especially true with things that happen in our youth. Research shows that people remember more events from age 10 till 30 than any other time in their life, because that's when they're forming their identities. So nostalgia is not a true recreation of the past, but a combination of many different memories all sort of integrated together, and in the process, all negative emotions are filtered out. Our biased minds remember fleeting feelings, emotions, or moments of glee. As it turns out, nostalgia isn't about remembering memories at all, but rather an emotional state. We lock away bits of happy experiences and to people and to places and even objects, and we love recalling them and reminiscing over them later. Here at Taylor Talks, we had a real nostalgia treat. If there's one film in this generation that epitomizes nostalgia, it's The Sandlot. The film brings us back to kids being kids, playing baseball in the average 1960s American town. We had the privilege of catching up with the director and some of the cast and getting nostalgic about their favorite scenes. Let's take a look at how that went. We sort of lived in this area where we were not um, well liked. You know, we got beat up on the way to school, beat up at school, and beat up on the way home from school. And uh, it was a very racial sort of thing. But anyway, this block that we lived on, uh, these guys were all buddies and had been there a lot longer than us. So one time, my brother, he's about eight years old, uh, went down the end of the block where these guys were playing baseball and, you know, we were all pretty poor, so you had one baseball. You didn't have a bucket of baseball. Yet. <laughs> right, right, right. So they hit this baseball literally into uh, a backyard at the end of the block, which had a concrete brick wall around about six, eight feet high. Okay. And behind that wall literally was a German Shepherd mix that was a ill-treated dog who was extremely mean and aggressive named Hercules. Oh, no way. They told, yeah, they told my little brother, hey, go get the ball and you can play with <laughs> him. They never let him play before. No way. And so he, I wasn't with him to sort of give him advice. He goes, okay. And over the fence he went, he got the ball. And as he was climbing back over, the dog broke the chain and ripped his leg up. I mean, just ripped, oh my gosh. ripped it to shreds. And uh, that's where the nut of the idea came from. About another movie to write and also at the same time, these bullies, these bullies from my childhood. And it, it suddenly occurred to me, I don't know why it hadn't previously, but suddenly, you know how these things happen. Why, why am I giving these guys the space in my brain? By the time I got home, I decided that the way best to deal with these bullies from my childhood was to turn them all into heroes. And that's what I did. The, the best, the single greatest best memory is, um, I wrote it, you know, we went into pre-production, we went and found an area to sort of build, because the sand, the, the sand lot that you see in there, we built everything, the houses, the, the tree is not even, that was a real oak tree that was like 200 years old, but the day that the sand lot set was complete. And, and, and he brought me out, he says, here it is, stand in the middle and do a 360 and tell me what works, what doesn't work, and I was, blown away. I, I, I was literally speechless. I mean, when I saw it all come to life in three dimensions, that was when I knew, look, you know, I don't know if this thing is ever going to send the test of time. I don't know. I know it's not going to suck, this movie, <laughs> you know, even if I do, because this is so great. And I think it's really, really got a good chance to be good, you know. Of course, working with all the kids, uh, I mean, you've asked these guys to this day who I'm still in touch with. They'll tell you it is the greatest summer of their lives. Literally, the greatest summer. So it's like kids playing kids from 1962, and the, the characters are having the greatest summer of their lives, and the kids that played those characters had the greatest summer of their lives. Hmm. Well, I mean, I think all of us remember pretty vividly one specific day where it was 
like 107 degrees, intensely hot, and everyone was worried about us just getting dehydrated, and, and it was insane. And then, on vice versa, the day we filmed the pool scene okay. was a really weird cold front came through. Oh no! <laughs> so we were all ready to, you know, do this pool scene in, in the pool and have a good time and relax and we're shivering and actually some of the scenes that made it into the movie you can see us in the background literally shivering oh, no. because it was so cold so i mean that that was definitely one of the difficult things but it's also one of the better memories because that's just what you have to deal with and it's it's fun yeah, about, about how it was that like a, that, that was, was the coldest day of the entire film shoot um, and, and it was true uh every day that we filmed it was just like sweltering hot and in between, in between takes, we would have, you know, be drinking water and getting under the shade and all that. And so we were so looking forward to filming those pool scenes. And we finally get there, and it was like the three coldest days. You can, you can see Squints, his teeth are chattering in a couple of the shots. We all got along, and we loved having fun. You know, when we were off the set, we were hanging out, you know, in between, you know, shoot days and all that. So I think that really comes across when you watch it, that we were all genuinely friends and that we really liked hanging out and being around each other. My favorite scene was actually the kid crane scene where I'm floating about 20 to 30 feet above Mr. Myrtle's fence, about to be lowered into the lair of the beast to get the ball back. Really fun scene. I pretty much did my own stunts. Had a great time doing it. When I was making the picture, another great memory I have is this. I mentioned before, I go, look, the Sandlot is not my child. It's the way I wanted my child to, to have been. Yeah, okay. I, I think that's part of the reason that we enjoy nostalgia so much is because, you know, our, our brains don't necessarily remember things the exact way that they happened. They, they kind of get mixed up with imagination and we kind of remember things the way that we wanted them to be or with a skewed, you know, sense of joy behind them. You know? I, I, I completely agree. I mean, if you really get down to the nitty gritty uh, 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 of what the Sandlot has to say to people and an answer to your question is put others before yourself. I mean, look, Benny is a world-class athlete at the age of 13. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't care what people think about him. He, he it, not, the only thing that matters to him is baseball and he's got nothing to lose mm. by friending Scotty Smalls. Nothing. Yeah, it's true. Very true. And I think we need well, at least I try to, um, and but I think we should, is you, you need to, you, I mean, we're going to get into this sort of, you know, religio-philosophical area, but I mean, area, but I mean, I, I, can, I can handle it. It's okay. Can you handle it? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> uh, it's like, you really, you know, why are we here? I mean, if you ask Benny that, I mean, you could do a nice, you know, PhD essay on the Sandlot regarding this yeah he, he's here to help another human being what else is there literally what else is there that was really special and fun while it's important not to live in the past research shows that there are benefits of a healthy amount of nostalgia it counteracts loneliness and anxiety it promotes personal interactions since most people regularly get nostalgic it binds us together it allows us to bond with those who have pasts like our own and also allows us to empathize with those that didn't. Additionally, by recalling the past, study shows that people look forward to what's to come. Also, through looking back at our cherished experiences, we're able to more easily identify the value and meaningfulness of our lives. Let's take the opportunity to get strength from all of our past experiences and push ourselves to make an amazing future. Forever. Forever. Forever.
If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button and that notification bell on the bottom right to keep up with videos as they come out. If you have friends or family that you think would benefit from watching this video, go ahead and share this video with them. If you have any questions for me about this topic or any questions in general, please feel free to leave a comment below and I'll make my best effort to respond to you directly. And finally, if you'd like to keep seeing more videos like this in the future, please consider donating to our Patreon page in the upper right. And have a great day.